<clears throat> All right. Exciting news. Special holiday edition of the State of MedTech. You know, got to bring out the ugly sweater. This one's got, got a nice, nice little thing going on. So we'll wait for everybody to come on in. And I'll do my usual, usual song here. The, you know, the Scott Adams voice warm up. Ba da da bum ba bum bum. Good med tech, you know. Got to bring out the ugly sweater. This one got got a nice nice. All right. So that seems to be working. What's up for everybody? All right, Ashley Boland. What's up? Ugly sweater. That's right. Damn straight. That is right. I'm I'm a man. I'm the man of the people. Right. Yeah. You know what? This is, this is that, I think it's that, that sweater company from the shark tank. They did over a hundred million dollars. Who would have ever thought that an ugly sweater company that is seasonal would have done that kind of money. Right. You never quite know everybody. Thank you so much. Christmas came early this year. Good God almighty. Christmas came early this year because, you know, we thought, we thought that, Hey, you know, these big transformational deals, not going to see them too often. But before 2021 L ended, Larry Ellison just said, you know what? Screw it. Let's just buy Cerner. This is a big freaking deal, people. This is a huge deal. This has huge implications for healthcare. Okay. Um, but more than you think. So let's start with the first fact. $28.3 billion acquisition is the biggest acquisition in Larry Ellison's life, right? That's the thing people don't realize. $28.3 billion. Peter Harris, yes, if you start an ugly sweater uh, 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 company, hit me up. $28.3 billion. So think about Oracle. They've been around for a long time. They've made all kinds of acquisitions. Why did the biggest acquisition they make happen to be in healthcare? There's a very specific reason why that, okay? Now, Let's talk about this, all right? And I know I'm making a little prediction here. Salesforce buys Epic. That's my prediction. If someone's going to buy Epic, it's Salesforce. Not Google, not Microsoft. It's going to be Salesforce. And I'll explain in a moment why. All right, let's, 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 go, to the, uh, let's go to this nice uh, uh, whiteboard that I've, I've, I've put up, okay? Um, and by the way, I'm going to allow some questions. So please throw some questions in. It's Ashley, Peter, thanks for sh showing up. Stan Chan, what is up? What a great name, Stan Chan. That's a great name. All right. So Oracle by Cerner, right? So now they have helped Cerner get into the cloud, right? Why is that important, right? And for those who are not familiar, for whatever reason, Cerner is an EMR, okay? There are two big players in the in this EMR world. There's Epic Systems, which is the big gorilla. That's the market leader. And then Cerner. So Oracle buys Cerner, right? So they're putting everything up into the cloud. What you guys don't know is that Oracle has a lot of no-code uh, uh, solutions that are going to make this whole administrative part easier. For example, they have a voice assistant, right? So this can help physicians with dictations, right? If you, if you look at the whole medical world, right, you look at the data, of course, we all know there's burnout. Why do doctors hate their jobs? Do you ever think about that? Why do physicians hate their jobs? Because it's gone up every year, and it's not because medicine sucks. Every physician who I speak to, whether it's a surgeon, an internist, they love the practice of medicine. They love it. What they hate is this administrative part because they're spending most of their time there, right? And EMRs are not designed to help improve medicine. They're designed for billing, pure and simple. OK, me having been to medical school, I can tell you right now how frustrated that would be that you're trying to come up with a differential diagnosis for a patient and figuring out like what little drop down menu they fit in. OK, now Oracle gets Cerner. They're putting things into the cloud. What does this have implications for? Think about the patient journey, because is it all within the hospital? No. Insurance companies are trying to keep people from going to the hospital because it's super expensive. We start looking at ASCs, ambulatory surgery centers, right? A lot of these are getting purchased and, and acquired by hospital systems, right? Let's go down from there. The clinics, small clinics, if they're not acquired by ACs, they're going to be part of the hospitals, right? It's very difficult to be a, a, in private practice these days, especially in larger cities. But the biggest part, the patient's home. One thing that you, know, you need to pay attention to is remote monitoring. Remote monitoring has been very, very big lately because of COVID, 
right? And it's become a huge path for reimbursement for, for clinics. So they're looking into this. Putting putting the EMR in, in, a, in a cloud system like Oracle is going to be very, very powerful for this. Now, here's where it gets interesting. You know what Oracle also owns? They own NetSuite. I haven't used NetSuite. I'm not crazy about it, but NetSuite is a CRM, a customer relationship management platform, right? It's similar to Salesforce or HubSpot or any of those other ones. They own that. So if, if uh, and, and Ash, Ashley, what's, if you can be more question, uh, more specific about question, you said, who does it? Who does what? If you, if, when you guys ask me questions, you got to be more specific because I'm going pretty fast here. Now, if you think about it, if if Oracle is the is it owns NetSuite, right? That that's their CRM, and they have the EMR here. Which, by the way, you can find you know pharma companies, biotech, they find ways to use the EMR to you know to, to advertise everything. How how much more compelling is it to healthcare companies, right? To say, you know to them where they're like, what CRM CRM should we choose? Oh, we should choose the one that's owned by the company that also owns the majority of EMRs that our customers using. You know, so that's, that's a big deal. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with Salesforce? Okay. Well, let me go to my library. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull a book to make a point here. All right. What people don't know is that Mark Benioff, founder of Salesforce actually wrote a book a long time ago called behind the cloud, right? There it is behind the cloud. So why is that important? Well, because Mark Benioff, at one point, um, was part of Siebel Systems, which is the which is the was the giant in CRM systems. They would install CRMs on campus, okay. And Benioff went and for the last twenty plus years has been talking about the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, okay. And um, Benioff was invited to speak at Oracle. I don't know, a, a de- uh, more than a decade ago. And like talked about how Oracle was doing the fake cloud. Like they said they have the cloud. It's a joke. It's not real. And Oracle actually canceled Benioff's keynote speech at their own event. And then Larry Ellison went up to talk just to pretty much bash Benioff and Salesforce, right? So there is a serious rivalry there, there now. Okay. Now, why would, why would Larry Ellison of all the things he can buy, why would he buy his, make his biggest acquisition in healthcare? Because more than 20%, I think it's 20 to 25% of our GDP is spent on healthcare. This is a huge industry, but it's not easy. This is very difficult. Look, Google tried to get into it. Um, I don't know what the hell Google's doing in it, in it so far. Amazon teamed up with Berkshire Hathaway and JP Morgan because they were going to change healthcare. Two years in, they threw in the towel and they're like, this is way too hard for us. you know. So it's not easy. That's why for any of these tech companies to get into healthcare, they cannot just do it on their own. They need to make the acquisitions of people who are already in there. Oracle getting Cerner is their way to just stick it to Salesforce. And of course, Google and Microsoft in the cloud games, right? To say, hey, we are a formidable opponent in the cloud. Now I'm gonna go to my post yesterday to pull the stats on this uh, on the cloud, but Oracle is not a major player in, in the cloud. Like, you know, the amount of uh, market share they have is, is um, I hate to say it, it's laughable, right? Here we go. Uh, let's, let's look at these, at these stats real quick. Ashley's question is how to scale with ethics and financial benefits for investors. Yeah, I, I will. That's a great question. I'm going to answer that. Okay. Here's, here's the breakdown. Okay. For the cloud market share, like all cloud, Amazon's got 46.5%. Not surprising because you think about AWS. That's a huge driver of their, of their business and revenue. It's actually not Amazon uh, uh, consumer. It's, it's AWS. After that, it's Microsoft at 14%. Look at that drop off from 46% to 14%. Okay. That's, that's the market share. And this is coming from the Wall Street Journal. And then after Microsoft, it's Google at 4.8%. So combining Microsoft and Google... Amazon still has more than double market share, right? That is insane. How much does Oracle have? Oracle literally has half a percent globally, at, you know, uh, according to 2020 uh, from Wall Street Journal researchers, right? So this is a huge move for them to say, hey, you know what? We don't need to have the whole market share of the cloud. We're just going to get the most important one, which is health- with the healthcare industry. Now, Ashley asked a really important question, which is, how do you scale with ethics and financial benefits for investors? Um, 
so ethically scaling, I have I don't know I don't know how to answer that question, Ashley. But what I would say is that when it comes to scaling, this is why Oracle buy, bought Cerner. Okay. And I think part of the reason why they got Cerner is that Cerner, Cerner had acquired some software company that that Salesforce was doing some collaboration with. There's a reason why they bought Cerner and not Epic. I, and I need to dig into, into the details as to why, but in terms of integrations, it just, I think it probably just made the most sense for them. Um, so I hope that answers, answers the question. I see there's 36. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Emmanuel Nunez, Emmanuel, thanks for joining. Do you think, so the question is, do you think there will be a whole merge between Epic, uh, ERP, sorry, CRM, ER, EMR, HIS and PAX? Yeah. I would think so. It's going to be really difficult to merge all those systems. But look, forget about healthcare for a second. Let's look at the consumer world. Okay. We can all agree Apple doesn't have the best products in the world. They don't. Okay. The Samsung Galaxy has, they have amazing phones. Why do people use Apple? Because of how easy it is. Look, once you're in the Apple ecosystem, and I'm one, a perfect example of that I was never big into Apple, but once you get into the ecosystem and you realize like, the having an Apple phone with an Apple computer and my Apple TV, like all these things make it so much easier to integrate. You pay for that ease. Think, you know, and again, look, let's go back. I love, I, I'm telling you, I just need to frame this. Look at, look at behavior change. We, we, I've talked about this all the time. Motivation versus ease, right? Forget about motivation. Ease. What's ease? Opportunity versus ability. When you solve for this, then you have adoption. Most of the time, people don't want to adopt something because they don't have the ability to do it, nor the opportunity. But if they have the opportunity and they're motivated, the one thing is the ability, right? So having having disconnected systems in healthcare, which is like the theme of healthcare, is a huge pain. So if you're able to integrate all these things, that's what's most important. Think about yourself as a patient. When I change my insurance companies or I go to a different hospital, I got to go through this whole thing. Like, I don't even know where my healthcare records are. Like who, who knows how that works? And I'm, look, I went to medical school. My father's a surgeon and I work in this industry. So think about your average American. So yeah, combining all those systems are going to, is going to be really important. The less administrative burden you put on physicians and nurses and healthcare providers, the happier they're going to be. That's like period, end of story. That's a compelling, uh, um, uh, value proposition for a hospital system who's recruiting physicians saying, Hey, we use this system. Everything's integrated. You spend a lot less time doing administrative work. We want you to show up and practice medicine. Larry, Larry Shore, Larry, thanks for joining. The real news. Larry says the real news here is going uh, is uh, is going this vertical for a big tech player. Most have avoided going beyond business case that leverages their core core across uh, industry platforms. Everyone needs to hire talent, pay bills, run financials. Those are uh, common platform technologies that aren't industry specific. So the big news here is growth may now require deep vertical integration. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely that is I completely agree with Larry's uh, uh, assessment there. And that's exactly why I thought this was a big story, because while, yes, Oracle has like, remember, half a percent of market share in the cloud. Think about it from your standpoint. If it's like, hey, we want to be more competitive. What do you do? focus on going into a variety of different industries requires more money, more expertise and everything. Or you say, what does the data show? The data shows that healthcare industry is probably the biggest, not probably is the biggest industry in America, right? 20, 25% of our GTP spend there. They're just going to own that, right? That's, that's, that's more than enough. And think about it. Like, again, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Forget about the EMR. You have their CRM system. That's going to be a com uh, direct competitor to Salesforce, right? And our industry, I hate to say it, is really old school. So it's not beyond me to think that a lot of these uh, med tech companies are going to just be like, oh, well, you know, our customers, these hospital systems, everything, they use the Oracle Cerner cloud. Um, and there are some benefits to us using NetSuite. We're going to use that. So that's a big thing. So Salesforce needs to figure out what the hell they're doing in the world of um, in the world of healthcare. Right. I don't think Amazon, Amazon really doesn't need to be in the business of healthcare. They, they could, they want to be, but they don't, they really don't have to with AWS. I mean, they, I, I just don't see why they would uh, bother doing it, but I could be wrong. Could, could be wrong. You know, so the, these are really important dynamics. And again, 
let's let's think about it from the point of view of sales and marketing, right? We're seeing more of tech coming into the world of medical devices, pharma, biotech. So that's going to change the dynamics, right? That's going to bring new and different competition for better or for worse. So for me, you know, I spent a year in, in the fintech SaaS world, right? There is a much different way, in many ways, a better way that they sell and market. They also suck at a lot of other things too. So it'll be very interesting to see the clashing and merging of these two industries. Um, Larry says, it's a mess from a cost standpoint. I'm not saying we spend too much. I'm saying the value we get for the dollar is shocking and getting worse. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That is the problem with healthcare, I think, is that there's a lot of like crap products that can come to market and the value you get is like very minimal. I mean, look, I hate to say it. I, I'm going to piss off a lot of people with this comment. Look at robotic spine surgery. Okay. There's all these robotic spine companies. Look, there's another one that came out. Um, in Europe, I won't mention which country, a robotic spine company. Okay, I looked at the system. What is it doing? The same damn thing everybody else does, which is focusing on pedicle school screw placement, right? You have three, four hour long surgeries. There's all these robotic companies coming out with these incremental improvements for something that takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes in most cases, right? And, 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 and so like, why spend millions of dollars on that? Like that's, that, that's the biggest thing. And again, healthcare systems are getting more savvy about how they purchase. Because again, think about it like from, from a consolidation standpoint, it was a lot easier to sell to a single hospital or an ASC because, you know, I'd say the level of sophistication, the way they think about things. And again, the number of deals that they're seeing is going to be a lot lower. You sell to a health system like a Kaiser, right? Or, uh, uh, or, or her, you know, or the Texas Medical Center, or any of these large health systems, they're seeing multiple deals. They're seeing macroeconomical uh, uh, data, and so they're going to be very clear and very um, uh, dogmatic about what they purchase. So if it's just like an incremental improvement, but it's going to cost more, then it's just not going to do it. You know, period. So anyway, so I think it's been I think it's been fascinating to see this. And again, I see more people joining. Um, so I'll keep I'll keep rolling with questions. And I, I do want to start taking some live uh, live callers and everything. Um, the one thing that I got to say is that uh, the, the some of the data is off between StreamYard and my other platform. So I'm going to have to talk to StreamYard about that. But yeah, again, that's that's the biggest thing. And look, I, we had another acquisition happen just last week, right? It was Zoll acquiring. Um, uh, Itmar, right? The the sleep monitoring company. My biggest thing is that when someone's making an acquisition, if it's more than fifty million dollars, there's a really damn reason why it's happening, and you got to think of a very large picture here. So, if Larry Ellison, out of the blue, what thirty years into his career, decides the biggest acquisition he's ever going to make is going to be in healthcare, that should that should get your attention right away. I, how the hell? I don't know. How are we not talking more about this? I looked at LinkedIn. I'm like, is anybody else talking about it? Why isn't anybody talking about this, guys? We need, I mean, look, this maybe it's Christmas holidays, right? But like, we need to pay more attention. Dan Bouchelle, Dan, welcome to the show. Do you think Oracle is just using Cerner to grow the rest of its healthcare business? Do you really think they will improve on Cerner's offerings? I, yeah, I, I, th I think that's exactly what it's trying to do. I think that they're exact, that they're trying to uh, use it to grow its healthcare business. And it's going to improve on Cerner's business offerings just by bundling things, okay? So if you think about how, like, look, what what did, uh, no offense, guys, what did Medtronic do when they bought Mazor Robotics, okay? When they bought Mazor Robotics, did they improve on Mazor's uh, core business, uh, core technology offerings? No, not like, not at all. Not at all. If anything, in my opinion... They, they took a few steps back because they're they, they trying to figure out how do we integrate navigation and all these things. What they did do is they strengthened the Mazor Robotic Systems business offering, which is they said, hey, you get the Mazor system. You're also going to get this kind of bundled deal on implants, this bundled deal on, on, on disposables, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's what Oracle is going to do with Cerner, right? Cerner, now, Cerner is going to go into hospitals and say, hey, here's why you should acquire our system because – with the Oracle suite, you're going to get you know, a lot of these low, co low code or no code solutions. You're going to get digital voice assistant, which is going to help your clinicians dictate, right? We're going to take, we're going to take those dictations and go into the EMR. Here, I make, look, I got another prediction for you. Here's a prediction. 
Okay. And I hope I don't piss anybody off at this company, but like, look guys, this is, this is a state of med tech. This is a prediction show. Okay. Robin, Robin healthcare. I think Salesforce is going to acquire them. Okay. Robin Healthcare, very interesting. So Robin Healthcare, uh, the team came out of Amazon. It was a group of people that worked on the Alexa device. And so they have a very interesting, um, like it looks like a Google Home or something that essentially goes into the clinic and helps with dictation that goes into the EMR and helps with billing. Okay. So if Salesforce makes this move into healthcare, which they should, right? The, why why should they bother making some, uh, dealing with hardware? They're, they're not a hardware company. Just buy somebody, right? Robin Healthcare is going to be acquired by Salesforce. I like uh, that. Uh, I don't know who else would do it. Google does not need to do it. Google has their hardware and, and, and voice device. Amazon does not need to do it. Microsoft, Microsoft doesn't need to do it. It doesn't make sense for Microsoft, actually. Um, and again, the reason why Salesforce is going to take this up, aside from the fact they're like arch nemesis with Oracle, the cloud is Salesforce's category, right? That's what people forget. Look, Benioff for the last 20 years wrote this book. He, he, he kept talking about the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, right? That's his category. That's his thing. Okay. So do you really think that Salesforce is going to allow their arch uh, uh, rival and nemesis to just waltz into healthcare, the biggest market in the U S uh, in, in the, in, in the U S and set up, set up the cloud that like Oracle is going to be the one that, takes healthcare to the cloud. Yeah, no, not going to happen. So I would, I would be, I mean, I wish Epic was publicly traded. I'd love to buy that stock right now. Um, but Salesforce is, I would say they'll buy Epic and they're going to buy them at a premium and Epic personally, like this is the thing about the EMR game. Like this is the most like unsexy old like thing in the world. Like it's just, like, there's nothing sexy about this. Epic needs something to compete with this now. They, Epic cannot compete head to head with this anymore. I mean, relying just purely on size and market share is is not enough because you can erase that over time. Like, period, end of story. And again, with healthcare systems are consolidating, people want the solution. Again, think about what I talked about with Apple, right? How for the consumers, like Apple has grown market share because they make it easy for all these devices to integrate and talk to each other. I mean, look. For God's sake, like there's, I use Bose headset. I'm, this is nuts. I'm really giving it strong consideration to buy the Apple over the ear headsets. But yeah, the ones that are like 500 bucks. I'm probably going to go and get like a refurbished one for like 300 because that's just an insane amount of money, but mainly because it integrates with everything so well. And that's, that's, that's the name of the game, right? Ashley Brown, Fortnite is sexy. I have no idea. I never, I never played Fortnite. Patrick, Patrick Jamnick, Patrick says, hi, we're just joining. So this may have been discussed already. That's okay. Epic is a very strong stay private. Don't get acquired culture. Obviously anything can happen, but it's something written as part of the company's commandments. Yeah. But you know what happens? You know, you know what, and you know what changes commandments really quickly when everyone can make a lot of money. Like at the end of the day, you, you know, if you, you follow the money, you follow the truth, right? Everybody's got a price tag. Everybody's got a price tag, right? And I think, you know, I've Epic's got great founders. They got great leadership over there. Over there. Um, but, you know, at, at the same time, like, got it. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe they have a really strong North Star and their thing is like, we're not going to get, just get acquired for the sake of getting acquired. That's fine. To compete with this, you need something. So if it's not an acquisition, you, you got to do a partnership, something. You can't, like, this is going to be very hard to compete with. Right. And again, I'm, I'm just talking about purely based on business offerings. Right. So I don't personally know what's the strongest uh, uh, value prop that Epic has over Cerner. I've talked to a lot of ho hospital systems and hospital admins. Nobody can really tell me, like, why go over go with Epic over Cerner or vice versa. Like, nobody can really tell me that. But these 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 offerings are going to be very big. And. Look, let's 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 take another consideration, okay? Walmart strategy, right? So, what did Walmart do back 
50, 60 years ago. Okay, Sam Walton of Walmart was competing with Sears, Kmart, all these big players. Did he go into these large, densely populated metropolitan areas like in New York and L.A., Chicago, and just compete head to head? No. What did he do? He went out to the rural areas, which there's more of them. And he essentially deployed a strategy of acquiring and just growing in the rural areas. And then that essentially engulfed these large metropolitan areas. You can argue that maybe Oracle, sure, maybe they, they're, they're focused on healthcare systems. They could also maybe find a way to create a really good offering for ASCs and clinics. If, if Oracle does, if Oracle gets all these ASCs and clinics and a lot of healthcare is trying to move there. I mean, look, think about yourself. When you get sick or you want to go get a procedure, do you want to go to a hospital system or do you try and go to like something small like an ASC or an office, right? That's, that's, the, that's the big thing. Again, this is all speculation, but it's possible. Emmanuel says Cerner's market cap is right around how much Oracle is paying for the acquisition. How much do you think Epic is worth? That is a great question. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be Epic is going to be worth more than Cerner, obviously. So if I had to take a wild guess, maybe Epic is worth, I don't know, 35, 40 billion. I don't know if Epic is worth more than 50 billion. Um, but look, anything is possible, my friends. And we're talking about Salesforce. Look, Medtronic, uh, what was it, 10 years ago? Medtronic paid $48 billion in cash to acquire Covidian, right? So if, you know, and that that was like part of, part of their business. So if Salesforce is the company for the cloud, right? It's, yeah, CRM is what they sell, but their whole philosophy and focus and vision is like, it's all about the cloud. They got it, they got it, they got it against the healthcare. Like that, I, I don't know. I don't know how else how else they're gonna do it. You know, they got to be in healthcare. Got to be in healthcare. And I'm wondering, actually, let me um, let me go look at Mark Benioff's Twitter. I I highly doubt that Mark Benioff had anything to say about this, but it's worth checking. Let's see, Mark Benioff. Nothing. Yep. Nothing about the Oracle deal. Nothing about the Oracle deal. I mean, we'll see. I could be completely wrong about this. I could be completely wrong about this. Um, but Salesforce, I mean, if they don't acquire Epic, they're gonna they gotta figure out a way to get involved in the healthcare in the healthcare business. I mean, the other the other option is just that maybe maybe that's not. I mean, look, what I could tell you is this is that I do know that Salesforce's uh, Salesforce has I've seen more I've seen their healthcare division grow. I personally know one of the execs that's over there. So their healthcare division is growing. Right. And 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 keep in mind, let's let's look at just from this aspect of CRM. What do we have in healthcare that is is part of Salesforce? You have hospital systems okay, that use Salesforce. You have pharma, you have biotech, you have medical devices, okay? You have the SaaS digital digital health world. So like uh, companies like where I was previously at, Gentem Health, and, and, you know, they do all revenue cycle management. So they're, this is a big ecosystem, my friends. This is a big ecosystem. It just, it's too big for me to believe that Salesforce is just not interested in it and saying like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do like hard pass on that one. Just can't see it. All right, I'm gonna check out any other any other questions. Great questions, everybody. Love it. I love I love these these live streams are starting to pick up every time I do them. So I appreciate it. I'm just trying to find. By the way, if you have ideas about what's a good time to do it, uh, let me know. I might do two today, just to see, you know, see see which one uh, does better. Um, let's see. Any any other questions? Yeah, and so um, you know, one one thing that someone was commenting is about uh, clinical trials and everything. So again, within a healthcare system, there's just there's a lot there's a lot in there. For, you know, think about beyond just the EMR, which again that's mainly for billing. Think about the clinical trials that are being done. Uh, and again, look, that's that's a that's a great point right there. Let me put that down. Clinical trials. 
right? That's that's one thing that can be managed between the Oracle Cerno cloud and let's say something like NetSuite that Oracle owns, right? It just the more the more that I talk about it, the more I think about it, it makes sense. Um, so I Salesforce. Does anybody have do, okay? So does anybody have any predictions or thoughts? I mean, if Salesforce, let's let's do a little like live research here. If Salesforce does not acquire Epic, who would they acquire? Let's look at largest EMR uh, systems by market share. Okay, let's take a look at this. Largest EMR systems by market share. All right, here we go. There's Epic. Epic. Okay, so Epic's got twenty. This is this is as of November twenty twenty one. This is EHR in practice by Jeff Green. I try and give some shout outs to the authors, you know, always give a shout out to our authors. Okay. So hospital EHRs, Epic's got 28% followed by Cerner quickly by 26%. Meditech is at 16. Okay. Ambulatory EHRs, Epic systems, 28%. Okay. All scripts is right after that at 9%. Okay. Um, so that that should tell you right there. That's that's something very interesting. I I'm not sure why. So that Cerner is not in the ambulatory. Uh, I'm looking at a top ten right now. Here's who I see for ambulatory: Epic Systems at 28, sharp decline. It's all scripts at nine percent. E Clinical Works at six percent. Athena Health at six percent. So you know what? Like there there it is. Look, if Salesforce 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 can have a really nice. Uh, foothold in healthcare. If actually this this would this would be the greatest rug pull of all time for acquisitions. That Oracle makes this huge acquisition of Cerner. It's this big news and everything. And then Salesforce says that's okay. We're just going to acquire Epic, and we're going to acquire them kind of like Amazon acquired. I don't know Zappos. Like they just let them do their own thing, right? And Salesforce not only gets the largest player in. Uh, hospital to, hospital EMRs, right? So again, the difference is only two percent, but then you just get you just get the next best thing, which is the number one market share when it comes to ambulatory centers, which is really the bigger. That's like, in my opinion, that's I think that's a bigger bigger slice of the pie. You know, that would be really that would be really compelling. That'd be really interesting. So we'll see. Any other questions? All right. Good discussion, everybody. I need to start, you know, I need to figure out a way with, uh, with, uh, stream but I, I, I will, I'll try and bring people on live actually. I know I can do that. So, okay. So I think that covers it for today. So be on the lookout for some of this news in the new year. Um, and yeah, as always, if you haven't, by the way, if you haven't subscribed the state of MedTech, we have a newsletter on LinkedIn, just look for it, the state of medtech. Please subscribe to it. And we have a podcast, State the State of Medtech. Look it up on Apple and Spotify. If you like it, hey, leave us a five-star review and you know say something nice. It helps us get discovered. Um, Patrick, Patrick coming in at the very end to keep me on. Patrick says, not sure how to factor this in, but Epic over indexes over indexes to the top hospitals. I bet they they have 50 plus percent share. Of the most prestigious health system. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think you are you're absolutely correct in that in that assessment. You're you're right about that. Because most of the smaller health systems that I talk to and everything, they they're all Cerner, you know. Awesome. All right, everybody. I'm gonna be off for now. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, happy new year. I'm gonna see you again next week. I'm gonna see you again next week. But again, special Christmas edition of the state of med tech, Oracle by Cerner. $28.3 billion. Is Salesforce going to follow through and they're going to buy Epic? Time will tell. We'll see you next time.